Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the, uh, the latest in our series of live seminars from um, Adobe's headquarters in the UK. Uh, my name is Steve Newbury, and during this afternoon's uh, e-seminar, we're going to be looking at using the comment and review tools in Acrobat 11. Um, one of the things that um, always astounds me is that there's a whole load of tooling inside Acrobat that very, very few people actually find or use. Um, and this is one of them that uh, sees, as, sees as little use um, in, the, uh, in the field um, or le less use than I'd expect it to. Um, you know, why would you use PDF as your um, platform for uh, review and comment on, on documents in your workflow? Well, one of the reasons is obviously sending out hard copy for review is both time consuming, costly um, in terms of postage and producing um, printed output. And also you've got to collect all the, uh, the comments back and, uh, and assemble them into a single document to, uh, to make updates, etc. You know, you could also use um, native file formats. InDesign file format, for example, package the job and send it to someone so they could open it up in InDesign, have a look at it, um, and then send you an email with their comments. A couple of things there. One, the, um, the package would probably be pretty huge, and the other assumption is, of course, that the uh, recipient's actually got a copy of the same version of InDesign that you're using. So, PDF, really good, useful, um, universal format for um, sending out documents to other people for review. The great thing is you only really need Acrobat in order to initiate the review. Anyone who's actually participating in the, uh, in the review can actually use tools available in the um, free Adobe Reader. Um, either by you enabling that functionality from Acrobat, or in the latest version, Acrobat 11, oh sorry, Reader 11, um, we actually have all the commenting and document markup tools available to us in that free reader. So, without further ado, let's have a look at um, and in initiating perhaps, or looking at some of the um, initial parts of sending out a document um, for, for review. So I'm gonna pop into InDesign for a moment, fire it up, because this Illustrator, Photoshop, or whatever might be the application of choice. It could also be that you, um, you initiate reviews on content that's going to go into a publication or um, piece of artwork um, using Microsoft Word or something like that. And we'll have a quick brief look at um, how you'd initiate a review from Microsoft Word on the Windows platform um, in a moment. But basically, we need to create a PDF from InDesign in order to share it with other people. A couple of things to bear in mind here. When we go to the File menu in InDesign, we have the ability to export directly to a number of formats, one of which is, is PDF. Above that option is um, PDF presets. And this allows you to either define or use build, the built-in presets um, for creating your PDF. Now, when you send a document for review, you probably don't want to send a full press quality uh, PDF to people for review because the size will be fairly, fairly substantial. So probably want to go for something like smallest file size just for the purposes of, of review. There's a couple of things or one thing in particular that you need to bear in mind when you do this. When you send um, a smallest file size, um, it assumes the color space to be sRGB and that may not be the case um, in the case of your particular document. So when we go for our smallest file size, it pops us a dialog and asks us to save that document somewhere. I'm just going to give it a different name and pop it down on my desktop here, say save, and then it will pop up in designs um, dialog here. And you'll notice um, that there's a little triangle there with a warning um, symbol in it, suggesting there might be something a little bit amiss with this particular file. And in fact, it's all to do with that, that particular color space issue. So what we can do is go to our output options here, and instead of convert to destination, which is the basic um, default option here, it's basically say no color conversion. That way you're not going to get issues um, with colors changing and so on and so forth when you share that with other people. And once we've done that, if we go back to our general settings here, we can then decide which pages we want to send um, as part of this, this review. It could be the entire document or it could indeed just be an individual page that you want other people to, uh, to look at. Let's just um, choose all pages in this particular instance. This is a document with a number of spreads in it. Um, and you can send those as individual pages or as spreads. And obviously um, magazine pages tend to look better if they're displayed as spreads, so we'll choose spreads as well. We've got a number of other options here that we don't necessarily need, and we'll just say export that. And that'll take that out to our desktop. InDesign's actually popped us a warning here as well, as it does, um, to tell me that I've got overset text on, on a couple of pages. We'll not worry about that in this particular instance. Say OK. Now, so that will have saved down to my desktop, and lo and behold, there's the, uh, the file in question. 
which we can then, if we wish, subsequently open up in Acrobat. Let's just turn the tools off for a moment, have a quick look at the document itself, and we'll see that we've got our document with the resplendent spreads, etc., for that particular document, and it's all ready to go. So, I want to send this document out for review. Now, as, as always with Adobe, um, two or three different ways of doing this, and the um, the three primary ways of doing this is as an ad hoc unmanaged review. So in this case, that file saved to my desktop, I just simply um, add that as an email attachment and send it to two or three other people that, um, that can comment on it. And then they can send back the document to me and we'll see in a moment how I can actually combine their comments into uh, my master document. However, the other two ways are to send um, an email, a managed email based review or initiate a shared review. And they both have um, particular advantages. Obviously, um, a shared review needs to be hosted somewhere. And you get the option to either host it on Adobe's Acrobat.com um, shared cloud service or on a server of your choice. And then everyone collaborates on the same, docu on the same document. Um, the advantage of that and potential disadvantage is that everyone can see everyone else's comments. So they'll be able to see what everyone else has written. And that's an advantage if you want people to be able to benefit from those comments. But if you want, obviously, for people not to be able to see other people's comments on a particular document, um, then the email-based review might be the best way to go about it. Because that way, you invite, um, you send out the document or a link to the document um, to all the recipients that you want, and they each submit their comments individually and independently. And then we use the tracker inside Acrobat to actually aggregate those uh, comments and bring them all together. Anyway, let's just have a quick look at the actual commenting tools themselves inside of, inside of Acrobat. So without um, being too obvious about it, they're kind of under the comment um, uh, bar here, and we end up with a number of panels available to us here. There's annotations, which are the base, basic annotations available to us, things like post-it notes, uh, text highlighters, a typewriter tool for just writing text onto the document. Um, then there's a few un, 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 unusual ones. So the most unusual ones are sound annotations. So if you've got a particular point to make, you can actually shout at someone in an annotation and actually add a voice annotation to a document so it can actually talk back to, the, uh, to the, the, the initiator of this particular review. Um, another one is the ability to attach other content. So it might be that there's a, there's a whole raft of text, for example, in an article um, that you want changed, and you can actually attach either another PDF or a Word document or whatever to the, um, to the document as an annotation, and then the initiator will receive that as part of the, uh, as part of the review. The other tools we have available to us down here are things like um, insert text at cursor, um, strike through and underline and various things like that, and also highlight text and apply a, um, a note as well, and also um, text correction markups as well. Those, those are reasonably obvious in the sense that you can click on them and do things. Basic ones like the, um, the post-it note, for example, you can simply click on the document, creates the post-it note marker on the document, and also highlights out to the, um, the panel on the side where you can actually write your, your comment in, the, in there. Um, is it me or is it you? Something like that. And that basically gets added to the comments pane over on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the window here. And every comment you add will be added in page order and in, in order of comment onto that, that pane. Um, and we'll see how that pane also aggregates all the comments from, from other people as well. So we've just added a little comment there. It might be that we also want to highlight a piece of text here. Again, you can just highlight the text, or if you double click it, it will open up a post-it note associated with that highlight. And we can perhaps say change color of text or something like that. And again, it's added the note in here. Now you notice that it says administrator above each of these, these notes. Um, basically what it does is it picks up my um, login credentials for this particular machine and utilizes those as an identifier. So if I was to send this to someone else and they were to add their comments, it would pick up their identifiers. What you might also want to do is go to your um, preferences here 
and look at the identity option here. And in here, it lists the, the um, login name, which can't be changed. However, you can also add your real name, your title, your organization, organizational unit, and your email address as part of um, that identity. Now, it's particularly important if you want to start using email-based reviews or the, um, the shared review that you put your email address in as well because it will use that um, when it's sending out the invitations to, um, as a reply to address and also as the, uh, the address for the default mail client as well. So that's pretty important to do is, is fill out those identity um, parameters there and it will pick up on those as well. Okay, one of the other um, more unusual options in the annotations uh, panel here is the stamp. Now, stamps are stamps. They're not stamps that you put on envelopes, but these are stamps like rubber stamps that you mark documents with. And by default, the, um, the application comes with a number of dynamic and standard business stamps but you can also create your own. Um, they're effectively simple PDF documents saved in a specific location on disk that will allow you to um, create your own stamps marked up with your own information and also to pull information in the case of a dynamic stamp back into the stamp when you apply it to the document. So for example, here we can just say, um, apply a standard business stamp of um, not approved and bang that on there like a rubber stamp. These stamps can all be changed in size and also um, orientation, whoops, and orientation, just need to get the little rotatory thing there and rotate things around. And we can um, plonk our stamps at any angle we like so we can have a jaunty angle to our stamp. And if we look at the dynamic stamp options, if we go to dynamic here, we can see reviewed, revised. Again, you can just say you can create your own here. But what I, do, what I can do here is, for example, mark this as confidential and it also picks up in the case of this one the um, Adobe Systems Europe limited um, organization information or for example if I was to pop down something like a um, reviewed here and stamp the document with that and you'll notice as I stamp the document with each of these it adds a new comment in the comments pane over here so everything is, um, is highlighted and marked within the uh, within the comments um, the comment pane and there it's picked up my name and at what time and what date I actually re received this particular document <clears throat> okay the other tools we've got available to us are um, what we call drawing markups they're not restricted to use on drawings so for example we've got things like text boxes we've got call outs so we can actually apply a call out to the document and draw out a call out like so. Um, we can also use arrows, circles, um, rectangles, polygons and so on and so forth. And we've also got a pencil tool which is particularly useful. So we can actually go in with that pencil tool if I've got a little bit of my, um, my page actually left to work with. In fact, let's, because this is a multi-page document, move to another page pop in um, a fresh markup and you can actually draw your, um, your markups on the page as you wish. So you can actually go in and, and scribble stuff onto the, uh, the page. Again, each one of these, um, these markups is um, editable and has um, post-it note assigned to it. And also if we click and hold, I should, or right click, let's try right click here. We can go into properties and change things, for example, like the, um, the thickness of the line. So if we want that to be, you know, a, a monster thick line, we can do that and change the color of it as well. And you can do that for things like your post-it notes and stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's really useful. So you can go in and change the, um, the appearance of your, uh, your various um, um, notes and um, drawing markups to, um, to, to work exactly the way you want them to, to appear. And again, they're all listed over here on the, on the panel. And if you click on a particular markup, so let's go to one of those stamps that I created, it will actually jump you back to that particular stamp that you created. And in this case, click on that one, it takes us back to the particular piece of annotation um, dependent on what you click on. So very quick and easy to, um, to, to add um, annotations and markups to a document. Now, had this been sent to me as, as part of a, an ad hoc review, if you like, 
Um, I just received it as an email attachment. I'd opened it and marked it all up. What I'd now need to do is save it to desktop or somewhere um, and then go back to my email client, attach it as part of that email and send it back to the, um, the initi initiator of this review. So what I'm gonna do here is rather than use this particular document, I'm gonna pick one that uh, I use for demo purposes. So just bear with me a second while I dive in here and go to my informal review panel and open up my copy of this document. And as you can see, there are no comments associated with this document at the moment. So what do I need to do? Well, what I need to do is go into my options um, flyout at the top of the, the comments list and say import data file. And here I go off and identify each of the returned emails. In this case, I've had two returned email P as PDF attachments from, from email. And all I need to do there is say open. And what it does is it imports all the comments directly from those um, PDFs into my, um, into my, my document. So I can see everything together along with any comments I might have made myself. And we see them all listed over here at the side. Now, it could be that this was also part of a managed email review, and we'll come to actually how you send and initiate one of those in a moment. But when you initiate a managed review, um, the recipient receives um, additional instruction within the document, and an email-based review has a submit comments button at the top right-hand corner, which allows them to submit just the comments back to you. And basically what it does is it extracts the comments as a simple forms data format FDF file and sends that tiny FDF back to the initiator. And if I go back to my desktop and look in the comments folder here, we'll notice that one of these, if I can open this panel up, is actually not just um, an Acrobat document, but a forms data format document, um, an FDF. And if I double click that, what it does is it, it tries to associate itself back to the document that was um, initiated the, uh, the review. So I can just double click it and it immediately goes straight in and places the comments into the document. If it can't find it, it will pop your dialog and ask you to browse for the document that you, uh, that you use to start the review. And once you've got all your review comments in the, um, in the, in the review panel here, of course, you may want to be able to sort and manage those particular comments. So what we can do using two options at the top here is filter our comments. So we could go in and actually filter our comments and say, show comments, hide comments, we can also filter by type, so show me just the sticky notes, for example. Hides all the other comments and just shows me the sticky note type comments. Or if I go in and say I want to see just the um, inserted text, again, it will show me just the inserted text and in this case, the sticky notes because I forgot to unclick the sticky notes. So just the inserted text here. So it can very quick and very easy to um, to, uh, to, to sort and filter your, your comments. Let's just put it back to um, all, so we can actually see all our comments. Another option we've got available to us is to, um, to actually um, export our comments to other formats. So we can go out and export to a data file, so it'll actually take it out to a common delimited file containing um, all those comments so that you can use them again, or particularly of interest to anyone who's initiated a review perhaps from a Word document is you can actually export the comments to, to Word. So you can actually take the comments back into um, a Microsoft Word document or an AutoCAD um, drawing as well. Um, another thing while I'm here, you can also um, undock the comment list. So if it becomes too cumbersome to use in, in, the, in its current form, if you say undock the comment list, it'll actually pull the comment list out of that panel and allow you to display it as you wish on screen um, in the, in the format that you perhaps prefer, so a bigger window and stuff like that. And again, we can also go and sort our comments by type, by author, and date, and checkmark status. And I haven't mentioned checkmark status, just put them back to date. But what you can do is you can actually go in and when you select a comment, there's a little box at the top that allows you to apply a checkmark. And also with each comment, you can come in here, you can reply to the comments, you can delete the comment, or you can set its status. So you can say accepted, cancelled, completed, and rejected. So you can mark them up. And then again, you can sort and filter based on status as well. So you can check to find out all the comments that you've reviewed and accepted, for example, um, very quickly and easily. So let's just um, 
redock the comment list so I can find it again. Otherwise, it'll hide itself underneath the window, and I'll forget what I've done with it. And um, basically, that's 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 nice and easy. The other thing you might want to do is summarise your comments. So to bring all the comments together um, and and summarise them in a, in a in a document so you can see everything listed um, and perhaps print it off or save it somewhere else. So what you can do there is you can go into your options panel here again, come on down and say create. Um, a comment summary or print with comment summary. I'm just going to say create a comment summary. So in this case, it asks you what size paper you want. I'm just going to use A4 and comments by page, or you can by author and so on and so forth. And whether you want all comments to be shown in the summary or only the comments that are currently visible on uh, in the comments panel. And the other thing we can do also, and this is, this is I particularly like, is you can create a document and comments with connector lines on separate pages. So it basically creates you two, two pages, one with the comment summary on it and one with the, the page that is being commented on with connector lines that draw across to um, identify where those comments belong. So I'm just going to use that option um, in here. You can change things like the colour and opacity of the, uh, of the, the markup as well. And I'm just going to say create comment summary. And it will go off and do exactly as it said on the tin. So it's gone off now and it's created my summary over here on the right, and then it's linked out to each of the comments in the document um, where they belong, um, so we can see exactly to, which they to where they relate. And again, second page, same thing. So nice and easy to, uh, to summarize comments and make them, uh, make them easy to, uh, to identify. I'm just gonna close that document down and not save it. Okay. So viewing comments, summarising comments, sorting and filtering comments is really, really easy as well. So it really comes down now to how we initiate those, um, those, those, those requests, if you like, for review and comment on the documents. So again, from our panel over here, we'll notice that we've got a review panel, and that's where we send for shared review, send for email review, and track those managed reviews. As I already mentioned in the previous um, piece, um, an ad hoc review is initiated directly from your email client, so you just go in and um, initiate it from the, uh, the email client just by attaching the PDF and sending it to someone and asking them to review it and send it back. So that's, that's easy. But if we want to send um, a document for an email-based review, all we do is click on the box. It would be a good idea to have the document, a document open. It doesn't really matter that much, to be honest, because um, it will ask you to identify the document if you don't have one open, but it's just easier to, uh, to have a document open there. And I want to send that for an email-based review. And all it's going to do here is basically um, we need to invite reviewers, preview the invitation, and send it. And so here's where we can browse for the document we want to send, or it's automatically chosen the one I've got open. Say next. Here's where we type in the email address. So it could be just send it to myself. Um, and it will go off then and um, check that that's a valid email address prior to actually generate auto-generating a template email for us. In this case, please join the review of this particular document. When I hit the send invitation um, button, it will basically drop that into the outbox of my um, default email client and allow me to send off that uh, invitation um, when I'm ready and re um, be received, obviously, by the recipients. Now, a couple of things it's going to do there. It's also going to um, place a copy of that um, that request into my tracker as well. And I'll show you the tracker momentarily um, so that I can actually track who that's been sent to, who's responded to me and so on and so forth. And um, also while I'm here and uh, remembering, you can also go in and um, completely customize this, um, uh, this invitation to your own requirements as well. So you don't need to send the invitation um, as Adobe have pre-formatted it for you if you don't want to. So I'm just going to cancel that because I'm not going to uh, tempt the, uh, the wrath of the demo gods and, uh, and have it all break on me while I'm trying to send and receive emails to myself um, because sending emails to and from yourself is nearly as bad as talking to yourself and people think you're a bit potty. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do instead is just move um, on to um, creating um, a shared review now. So when you want to send a document for shared review, remember this is where we put a document in a central location and then invite people to actually comment on the document in situ.
So I'm going to say um, send for shared review. Now here we get a couple of additional options. So um, in this particular case, it's going to automatically download and track comments with the Adobe online service. So basically use acrobat.com as, uh, as the host location. Um, but you can also come in and say automatically collect comments on my own internal server. So if you're, um, in particular, if your um, review is, is, is purely internal to your organization, you can keep the whole thing behind the firewall um, and, and initiate the review from there. I'm just going to choose that as an option here so we can see what the, uh, the various options are once we've done that. And again, we can um, either use a network folder, a SharePoint workspace, um, or a web server folder as the, uh, the host location on an internal server. Um, and then you just need to put the, uh, the address for that particular location into the, um, into the box. Um, and then once you've done that, you hit the next button and it'll auto generate the email and um, send it out um, to the, uh, the recipients through your default email client again. Again, I won't do that right now because um, Again, we'll tempt fate if we try and do that. What I'll do is I'll actually um, drop into um, um, an example that I've already created um, and, and let us have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is just pop back to my folder here and drop back to my review, go to my test folder here. Um, when you send that document for a shared review, it creates a duplicate of your original master document and calls it um, uh, with underscore review at the end of it. So that's the document that's being reviewed. And if I double click that, it'll open up inside Acrobat and it will also connect me or my master document into the shared review. And it then pops this dialogue that says, welcome back to the um, shared review. And it lists the people that have been invited to participate in that review. And it also shows me very quickly who's, who's responded and how many comments they've made. In this case, only one of my alter egos has actually responded and has responded with three comments. Um, the others obviously need a bit of a chivvy. So I'm just gonna say um, okay to that, and it will bring me into the, uh, into the dialogue. Now, across the top of the screen, we'll see this yellow bar. And this appears when you're um, participating in a shared review um, to invite you to check for new comments, so we'll go back to the server and check to see if anyone, since last time I opened this, has actually um, inserted any additional comments. Um, and then it flagged me to just tell me that it didn't actually have any, um, any, new, any new comments. If I was to come in here now and use one of these tools um, to add an additional comment, I'm just going to do a squiggly thing here in the corner. Obviously, it's inserted a new um, comment as part of this shared review. And now the publish comments button in the yellow bar has highlighted itself, become available, so that I can publish those comments back so that everyone else can see them. And I just hit the button and off it goes and publishes those comments. Now, it might be that you change your mind and you want to actually withdraw that, that particular comment. So a couple of things you can do. If you've used that particular pencil tool, you can use the eraser and you can rub it out or you can obviously come down, uh, click the uh, comment itself, right click and just say delete and it removes it. And again, the publish comments button appears because we've modified the document and the comments. And we can hit that and it will then go back and remove that comment. Um, so it's come back and reminded us that one comment was deleted. So it'll go back to the server and everyone else um, will have that comment um, taken back so that it's not part of the, uh, part of the review anymore. So nice and easy to, uh, to, to do. So participating in a shared review, as I said, is, is really a really easy thing. Um, you just basically um, click on the links in the email that, um, that's sent out to you from Acrobat. Um, that will take you to the document, either invite you to download it as part of a, an email-based review, or take you to the document um, on the server if you're in a shared review. So really quick and easy. And then once you've done that, you just literally press the buttons and add your comments um, and, and press them again if you need to uh, publish additional comments back to the, uh, to the server. So really quick and easy way to, uh, to work with, um, with, with review documents, particularly in this shared review environment. Now I'm just gonna close that document again and I'm not gonna save it in this particular instance. So, I want to see which rev what reviews I've got out there, documents I've sent for review, and track what's going on with those particular um, review documents. So in this particular case, I can just click on the track reviews document. It will pop out a dialogue now for the tracker, and it will show me that all the reviews that I've sent, 
any reviews that I've joined that other people have invited me to participate in. Um, and it also tracks forms as well, by the way. So if you send out forms to be filled in, um, you distribute the forms, it will show what's been distributed and who's responded and also which are received. But in this particular case, we're only interested in the reviews. I can see that I've got two reviews. Excuse me. Um, both very similar. If I click on this one, it's an email based. The little tooltip comes up and tells me it's an email based review that I've sent out. And there's another one, a shared review of um, CheckMag um, that uh, we were looking at just now um, in, the, in the application. If I click on that one first, um, it brings up more detail once we click on it. One is you can click on a button and it will open the document and let you view the comments. That's fair enough. You can also change the deadline. So you can set a deadline when you send the review out. I, I neglected to mention that. Um, so you can set a deadline for the review, um, but you can also change it from the tracker. So if you want to extend or shorten the review process, you simply go to change deadline um, and change the date and time on that. And you can also force an end to the review directly from the tracker as well. So if you've got enough comments, you're overwhelmed with them, you can end the review um, at any given point. What we can also see is from the reviewer's side, um, the number of comments, three total, active reviewers, one, and then we can come down here and actually see um, who the reviewers are and who's um, actually participated in the review um, and who the, uh, who, the, who the laggards are. If you click on any of these email addresses, it will pop um, a new, new message and allow you to send a message directly back to the, um, the individual concerned and perhaps give them a little, uh, a little um, light encouragement. Um, or you can hit the button to say email or reviewers and it will just send out a blanket email to, to all the reviewers in your particular review. The other one you can, thing you can do is add reviewers to the review. So if you want to um, add an additional person to the uh, review, rather than going through the whole process of you know, send for um, shared review, you can just hit the button, add reviewers, um, and it will just add an additional person to that, um, that, that shared review. And you can also, if you use the same group of people over and over again, you can just start a brand new review with a new document just by clicking on the start new review with the same reviewers button um, from within the tracker. The information provided from the, um, the, the email based review is very slightly different. In this particular instance, um, we can come in here, slightly less um, um, options here. You can't start new reviews with the same set of reviewers or anything like that. But you can still email all the reviewers, you can still add additional reviewers, um, and you can also see um, um, in there who's um, Who's, who's, who's been invited to take part in this particular review. Now I've invited a number of people to participate in this review. It doesn't appear that um, I've got any responses as yet, but I could check my email to make sure that no one has had the, um, the time and uh, inclination to fill out a review. It doesn't appear so. So the, the one and only live um, internet-based part of my reviews um, uh, is, uh, is, is, is not going to be uh, visible to us, but we'd be able to see um, one of those documents come in, a little FDF file that I could then open and um, add to this particular review. It's not a big deal. You saw it working um, when I showed you it with the, uh, the static document earlier, so that's not, not a big problem. So you can see that it's really easy to, um, to, to work your way through the, um, the whole process um, of sending um, and receiving comments um, in a shared review or as a part of a managed email um, review, or indeed an ad hoc um, process as well. Um, I'm just going to view comments on this particular document again so we can see that it'll open it up um, and, uh, and display it from the tracker as well as opening my, um, my master copy from disk. Um, um, as well. So let's just pop that one away, not make any savings, and have a quick look at um, some other bits and pieces. So we've tracked that stuff. Now, it's all very well um, being able to comment on flat artwork, if you like. Um, as you know, Acrobat supports um, the concept of layers in much the same way as Photoshop Illustrator and InDesign, and you can turn layers on and off. You can also comment on layers, and the comments will be um, shown and, uh, and displayed um, appropriate to the, the layer that they're made on. Um, so that's pretty cool. But the other thing you can do is comment on other types of content, and in particular on um, video content, would you believe, and also um, 3D content. And we'll have a quick look now at, at both of those. So I'm just going to go to my um, file dialog here and pop back to my demo folder. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Let's put that away. 
and let's just pop back in here and go back to my review folder and look at the video in 3D here. So I'm just going to open up a um, single page document with a piece of video inserted in, in the PDF. Now, what we can do is click to activate and this will play back um, and it'll have a little playhead on it as well. And just bear with me a sec because this is, is gonna be a bit small. So I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on this, this particular location a bit better than, uh, there we go. Uh, make it a little bit more obvious what we're doing. And we can pause the video at any point and had I not zoomed in, of course, I'd have access to my, uh, my tools here. And at any point, we can actually use the, um, the various tools to mark up the video. So we pause the video, come in here, and then we can actually go in and draw on that particular frame of the video. And we could also double click and open up the, the note. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna actually zoom out again. This is gonna be too, too painful to, uh, to experience. Go in here and say something like nice globe. And that's fine. We've made our comment and it's come up in the comments pane. Then we can continue to play our video. So let's just pop in here and bring up the playhead again and whoops, continue to play the video to another place or just skip. Now interestingly, um, I, I did a little um, seminar last week on um, the, or well, the week before last on interactive um, content. And um, in there, you can actually insert um, if you've got uh, chapter points in your video, you can actually create buttons that will jump people to specific chapter points um, within the video. Um, but in this case, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna make another comment on a different frame here. So I'm just gonna say on, on there, I'm gonna put a circle around that and comment on that particular oops, piece and say lose the in tray, like so. So now we've got a couple of comments in our, in our video and I'll just say play video to the end or something like that. So we just move away from that particular frame. Oh, there we go. And I'm gonna just pause the video. So now if we go to our comments pane over here and click on the comment, it will take us directly to the relevant frame in that piece of video and show us exactly where that comment was made. So in this case, it's pointed us to the nice globe. Um, and in this one, if I click on that, it takes us straight to the frame of video where I commented on removing the in tray from that particular particular shot. So very quick and easy again to um, comment on, on, on moving graphics as well as on, on static graphics. So that's, that's pretty nice. Just gonna close this one down and open up yet another example. And that one is this example that's actually got a piece of 3D content built into it. So this is a, um, a PDF document with embedded um, U3D content, which can be manipulated like so quite nicely just by dragging it around on the page. We can also have buttons on our, on our um, content to allow us to, uh, to jump to specific locations. I'm just going to create an exploded view of this and I'm going to start making comments on this piece of 3D content now. So in this case, I'm going to take a post-it note and I'm going to drop it here on this, this little green blob and say, just put a note in there saying, I don't know, PCB for printed circuit board. And then I'm going to pick up my piece of video again and rotate it round and get my drawing markup tool here and scribble on it like so. And um, if I double click that of course I can put a comment on that as well um, and call that a yellow thingy and so on. So we can keep adding comments to a piece of 3D content and moving it about and doing stuff with it and then we can use those comments as the basis of finding the various elements in that, doc in that piece of um, 3D content. So now just like the video when I click on the comment it rotates the view to the specific point where that comment was made, so we can identify and see the comment directly within the uh, within the within the within the uh, within the file. And even if the um, the content was put back to it, I'll just have a flick around on this and see if I can actually make it go back to some kind of normality. 
to the one. Let's go back to the default view, for example. There we go, our default view. And if we go in here now and click on, for example, the PCB, it's still highlighted even in the default view. Um, if we go to the yellow thingy, um, it will pop out and show us the yellow thingy and so on and so forth. So again, comments can be made inside of um, 3D content. So that's, uh, that's really good. Now also, as part of um, an email based review um, or an ad hoc review, you can also send documents to people that you want to comment on and they can use their mobile device to do pretty much the same types of things um, with a limited set of commenting tools on their, um, their mobile device. So what I'm going to try and do now, um, if the demo gods allow, is fire up um, my uh, iPad onto the screen to uh, show you the sort of things you can do with, and hopefully, yep, we can see my iPad on screen. Lovely. And I'm just going to fire up the Adobe Reader on here and open up that similar document to the one that we, uh, we were working with previously. And you can see that we've got our um, Check Magazine, I'm just going to turn it round so the orientation's a bit better for that particular page. When I tap on the screen, I have a number of tools available to me, but there's commenting tools available to me directly in here. Now, as I said, it's a limited subset of the tools that you get with, um, with the full version of Acrobat or Reader. But you can see on here, you've got the um, highlighter and the uh, post-it note. Um, you've got the pencil tool and the pen tool and so on. So if I just pick up the pencil tool, um, you know, again, we can go in and we can mark up our document exactly the way we want. And once we've done that, we can save that. So we can save those comments as um, an overlay into this particular document. And then we could go in and say, email that document and return it back to the uh, initiator, just as we would have done um, with uh, a, a, a review document on a normal um, PC. So at this point, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your time and attention this afternoon and um, look forward to talking to you again in the near future.